fabulous people welcome to italy if you plan on traveling to italy today i'm going to share with you how to spend the most perfect weekend in tuscany we will visit one of the most beautiful villages in tuscany pitigliano taste mouth-watering traditional italian food and enjoy hot springs in Saturnia. Now, before we begin, please remember to smack that like button. And if you're new to my channel and my vibe, and the vibe of this channel resonates with you, I invite you to subscribe. All right, fabulous people, let's go enjoy. I started my morning in Tuscany by enjoying one of the most famous and picturesque hot springs in Italy. Cascate del Molino or Saturnia Hot Springs. This majestic turquoise blue hillside hot spring with its steaming pools attracts Italians and tourists from all over the world to soak up the warm bath and breathtaking backdrop of the Tuscan countryside. The thermal springs of Saturnia have been proven to have a healing effect due to the large quantities of calcium, magnesium and sulfur among others. The water is supposed to be really good for the skin as well as the joints and due to its antioxidant effect to contribute to anti-aging and skin smoothing. I cannot think of anything more relaxing to start your morning with than visiting this place. Just make sure to show up early as these natural baths of Italy are one of the most famous attractions of Tuscany and therefore it does get very crowded here, especially during the weekend. Around lunchtime, the only thing that was on my mind is Tuscan food, and I knew just the perfect place for it. La Salina is a true hidden gem that offers mouth-watering homemade seasonal dishes and some of the best local wines like Morellino, Chianti, and of course Brunello, all to be enjoyed in a cozy atmosphere with a fireplace and a friendly stuff. And just in case you cannot decide what you should go for, the Parpadella al Ragù di Cinghiale is life-changing. One of the things that I love so much when I travel through Tuscany or Italy in general is stopping at this small agriturismo or family-run restaurants and trying some typical local delicious Italian food that you can find only in this particular region, guys. It is so delicious and also the prices are incredible, guys. I'm telling you, if you're looking for those truly authentic Italian restaurants that only Italians know about, come to this kind of places, you will never be disappointed. You will try local traditional food, traditional wines. The service is going to be just top because again, these are family run restaurants and you're going to feel so good afterwards. Guys, I'm definitely ready for a nap, but not yet because you and I are about to go and discover one of the most stunning villages in Tuscany, Pitigliano. On my way to Pitigliano, I wanted to stop by the winery with artisan wines, as the owner himself describes his project of a lifetime. Tenuta Montauto has been in the same family for nearly 60 years and prides itself for producing exceptional white wines. When I asked what makes these wines so special, I was explained that the entire work on the vineyards is done by hand, even the removal of the grass. And the composition of the soil, close proximity to the seaside with the presence of the sea breeze, makes it a perfect condition to produce delicious, one-of-a-kind wines like their 2018 Sauvignon Poggio del Crine. This is what I love so much about this kind of hidden places in Italy. We just stopped at this Steining winery and they won, just won, the best Sauvignon in Italy. This is the real deal, guys. Poggio del Crine, recognized by La Guida Essenziale ai Vini d'Italia 2024, as the best Sauvignon of Italy, represents the culmination of a life project taken on by Ricardo from his grandfather. Needless to say, I was looking forward to trying some of his creations. 
As I learned more about the wines and tasted some that seemed particularly interesting to me, I was genuinely impressed with the history of this place, its stunning surroundings and delicious wines that, of course, I had to take back with me to Rome. And the great thing about places like this, guys, is that before you decide which wine you'd like to get, you are welcome to taste this wine. So the owner will tell you more about these wines. Um, she'll or he'll uh, have you taste them and tell you the story behind those wines. So this is a very, very special experience that you absolutely need to do when you're visiting Italy. The next morning, I woke up early, excited to explore Pitigliano, one of the most picturesque villages in Italy. I don't think anything can prepare you for the first view as you drive up to this magical place. Even if you look closely, it's hard to tell where the houses end and the bedrock begins. This town, carved from volcanic stone, feels and looks straight out of the movie. Fabulous people, you know, Italy never feels real. It feels like you're inside a fairy tale. And this small town of Pitigliano is definitely not an exception. If you're looking for that slow living, delicious Italian food and just pure relaxation, this is definitely a place to escape big cities for the weekend. The endless labyrinths of narrow streets, vaulted passages and stone staircases is unlike anywhere you'll see in Tuscany. I recommend parking your car outside of the village walls and strolling the town center by foot. As you explore Pitigliano, or better known as Little Jerusalem, thanks to the large Jewish community it hosted within its walls in the 16th century, you'll find traces of Etruscan settlements everywhere. The Etruscans built ancient roads excavated completely by hand, used as a way of communication and connection of the villages with necropolis. The history of Pitigliano is ancient, as it traces its roots farther back than the Roman Empire. Here you can find and discover a plethora of historical buildings, like the majestic Palazzo Orsini, the ancient residence of the Orsini family. Definitely explore Jewish ghetto, the ancient neighborhood built by the Jewish community from the late 16th century. And of course, visit beautiful Pitigliano churches like the Church of San Rocco, the oldest building in the entire town, and the magnificent Cathedral of St. Peter and Paul. As the evening sets upon Pitigliano, the place to be and enjoy some of the best Tuscan dishes is Hosteria dal Cecotino. And one of the Tuscan travel tips that I can give you if you plan on traveling to Italy during colder months is to dress up really warm, especially in the evening. Nice cashmere sweaters, a nice wool coat will definitely do it, but just make sure that you bring in something warm because it is cold, guys. It is very cold. Now back to the restaurant. At Hosteria del Cecotino, you will find traditional old recipes, elegant ambiance, and over 120 wine labels. If you want to try something local, I recommend Bianco di Pitigliano for white wine lovers and for the red Morellino di Scansano. And to send you into a complete food coma, you cannot live without trying the most traditional dessert of Pitigliano, Sfratti. A stick-shaped biscuit filled with ground walnuts, honey, nutmeg, orange peel, all wrapped in a dough. And as for me, it's officially a wrap for the weekend fabulous. Thank you for watching this Tuscany travel guide and for exploring this less known but equally stunning and rich in history, customs and traditions part of Tuscany, Italy. When you start planning your adventure to Italy and wondering where to go in Tuscany, Pitigliano should definitely be on your bucket list. And if you're feeling inspired and want more Tuscany travel videos, check out my full guide on Montepulciano. And before you go, I welcome you to subscribe to my channel for more weekly Italy travel videos. Until the next adventure!